Hi, uh, my name is Daryl Frost. Welcome to Math Dive in 5 for Grade 3. This is Unit 6, focusing on division models. And my partner? Hi, my name is Emily DeVizio. Happy to be here with you today. So in just a moment, we're going to ask that you pause the video and on the next slide, there are two tasks that we would like for you to complete either by yourself or with a partner or your grade level team. You're going to utilize any manipulative that you anticipate students uh, will have access to to make sense of the two problems. Um, also, as you are working through the tasks, you're going to see that there are three questions at the bottom of the slide. Uh, reflect on those uh, three questions as you engage in the two tasks. So welcome back. Uh, before we actually engage uh, or actually discuss the test that you just engaged in, let's take a look at the progression of benchmarks within BEST. Uh, in second grade, uh, and this is not new, they've worked with repeated addition and rectangle, connecting that to the total number of objects and rectangular arrays. Moving into third grade there, you see three benchmarks, but we're looking at uh, they've already explored the idea of multiplication, and now we're going to be, in this video here, we're going to be connecting exploration with division ideas. And then in grade four, notice that the word procedural liability comes into play because we have, we are, um, students should have a reliable strategy that they can use to uh, multiply basic facts. And also notice, and I encourage you to go back to uh, and look at the, if you haven't already, the Maths to Best video where one of the changes are, we're moving from uh, factors of 10 times 10 all the way to factors of 12 times uh, 12, both with multiplication and division. Daryl, I noticed that um, in the second bullet is the, the verb explore multiplication. Does that relate to what they're going to build upon in fourth grade with the procedural reliability? Yes, it does. The first one of the steps uh, in, uh, or I shouldn't say steps, there's stages in building fluency with facts. We first have to begin with exploring, making sense of the operations and understanding different strategies and how they connect to each other. And that helps them then to develop or have a strategy that's reliable for them that they can use to um, solve multiplication and division problems. Thank you for asking that, Emily. Yes. You're welcome. So just a little bit more information before we actually get, uh, dive into that uh, cookie and cupcake problem. Uh, some important information about concrete models and types of division problems here. So I'm gonna click through here and I'm going to highlight uh, that direct modeling idea. It is, it's a very important instructional practice, both with multiplication and division, to utilize so that students understand these operations. Daryl, I have a question. Yes. It says to direct model. Correct. Does that mean that I am directly modeling how to solve that specific division problem? You mean you as the teacher? Yes. Absolutely not. Thank you for asking. No. What that means is the student is modeling exactly what is happening in the problem itself. And you will see that with the cupcake and the cookie problem. The student is doing the work. I'm so glad you asked that question. You're very yeah, no, it's not. Confusing. Yeah, it's not a let me show you how to do it and then you mimic it. It's the student making sense of the problem and doing the work. So with that being said, 
there are two types of division problems, and this is a little bit of content knowledge here, that students should engage in to make sense of division. One is called uh, partitive, and the other one is called measurement, or sometimes you see it uh, labeled as quotative division problems. So you probably wonder, okay, well, what, do those, yeah. what exactly do those mean, right? Well, let's just continue on here. So a partitive is like partitioning. I know the number of groups. So if you think about that cupcake problem, I knew that there were three plates. Those plates are the groups. And you're trying to determine in how many cupcakes go on each plate or how many and whatever the, the group is. The second type is quotative or measurement, and it's I know the size of the group, like in the cookie problem. Go so ahead. So yeah. partitive, I just had an aha. Partitive is kind of like a fair share where I'm passing out cupcakes into equal groups, right? So everybody's getting a fair, fair share. And yes. I notice with a quotative, I'm I'm taking the same amount out each time. Yes. To yes. See how many are any how many groups i have right not how many in the group but how many groups i physically have and just to okay. kind of and and with that just a, a little bit uh what we're going to talk about a little later the, the quotative is a little typically a little more challenging for students yeah and i i tend to lean towards sharing more partitive type of word problems to my students so i have to make a conscious effort to include more quotative. Absolutely, they need to see both and that will carry them through when they, you know, as they get into more complex ideas. So uh, using concrete models, and we're gonna connect this back to the two problems that you solved. The first one was the cupcake problem. And you see there, uh, Emily, let me ask you, what do you think that um, those circles represent from that? Mm. I don't know, maybe the plates that the cupcakes are going to go on, Daryl? There you go, and that's a partitioning problem. We're gonna partition those cupcakes by uh, giving each so plate- like a fair share. Like, like a, a fair cake. share. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So there's three students that I'm sharing the cupcakes with per se. Okay. And physically, you can visualize a student's gonna equally pass out one cupcake at a, a time uh, until there's no cupcakes left, and then they have a model that looks like this. And then they should start, uh, you wanted to start making connections to multiplication as well. I think it's important though that you point out to your students, like ask them questions such as, what do one of those circles represent? What does the larger plate, what does the larger circle represent as well, right? And then how many cupcakes are on each plate or how many would each student particularly get, right? Absolutely. Yes. Connecting it back to the context of the problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then so this problem here is the cookie problem. So you see, what do you suppose all those circles represent or those counters mm -hmm. or whatever manipulative was I'm used? I'm thinking those counters represent the cookies. The cookies. And okay. what's happening with the cookies? Um, we're passing a certain amount of them out at one time. Yes. So this would be more of a measurement division yes. problem. Okay. I'm taking cupcakes from cupcakes. Mm -hmm. I'm starting with the total number and then I'm- Cupcakes or cookies? Oh, I'm sorry, cookies <laughs> to see, yeah. Cookies, yes. And so each student is going to get um, each- um, Three cookies at a time. Three sorry. cookies at, yes, right. Each box can hold uh, three cookies. Okay. Yes. Yep. Does that make sense? Yep. Rather than one at a time. Fair one fair. at a time. Right. Yeah. So it's totally different. It's and you see there it connects to repeated subtraction. Mm -hmm. I'm taking cookies from cookies. So you see that equation there and what's actually happening. I think what's important though is that's how I kind of learned division was it was the same number I was repeatedly subtracting out, which is an example of this measurement problem, but not all division problems actually fit that direct model, right? Some of them are a fair share, which is a different type of problem. And that's the focus here. We need to engage, present students with both problem types and understand how it's, you know, either fair shares or the number of, um, I, I'm repeatedly subtracting. 
So from uh, uh, concrete models, uh, Emily, we want to move to representational models, typically our drawings. You see equal groups here and arrays. And then um, this is related to the uh, cookie problem here. But what do you uh, what do you notice about all these representational models? I notice that there are labels, and that goes back to my question earlier with the with the concrete materials, the manipulatives, that we really need to identify what that represents in the problem. So this drawing supports that with the labels. Exactly. So as students move into the using abstract models, and you'll see here with that um, problem of 15 divided by 5 equals 3, the, the cookie problem, you see three different uh, strategies here. Notice that there are labels there. Uh, students, once they are making sense of the operation, Emily, do you think they need to continue to write those uh, labels there? No, that was a question I had. Like, okay. does there come a point there where we stop using those labels yes. when we're solving our multiplication and division or any operation for that matter? Yes. Once the, as you are informally assessing and you, Emily clearly understands that this is division, what, if I'm thinking about that number line there, that each jump is a box of three cookies and the numbers are representing all the cookies that, uh, you have, then you can just ask those questions and they can tell you because they understand it. And the whole idea with these abstract models too is when they get to larger uh, divisors and larger dividends and they understand the structure of division, they, you're not going to want them to be using 300 counters, that they can now use more abstract or even some representational models to work with larger numbers. I go back to that standard that said explore, right? So we want them exploring with these different strategies, but obviously we want them to choose a strategy that would be more reliable, dependent on the numbers and the complexity of the problem that we're working with. That's exactly in grade four. Yep. So one possible misconception is the quotative or measurement division where the reference are the same. So let's think back to the, um, the uh, cookie problem where you were taking cookies from cookies. You had 15 cookies, you were putting three cookies in a box. So that can be a struggle for some students. If you see this, numberless word problems where they're really focusing on sense making of what's happening in the problem as well as um, the students directly modeling the situation will support that misconception. So thinking about the CRA process here, concrete, you see all different kinds of tools there. That's an actual example of apples, representation, equal groups, uh, an array where again, there's labeling and text to, and then repeated subtraction for abstract number lines and the equation again with labels go ahead emily i have a question for you though yes do is our end goal that we always want to get to the abstract or if i have a student that's struggling they might be using abstract thinking when it comes to multiplication but when we're learning division they're just not getting it for maybe particular measurement problems so is it okay to move back to concrete thinking even though just thank you for asking that question. Yes, these uh, islands here, if you will, are fluid. So that bridge building, you have to go back and forth. So you may have students that have a good idea or understanding of multiplication, but are not at the same readiness level with the division. So you may have to go back to the concrete. Absolutely. Good to know. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, we hope this has been helpful for you and uh, support your instruction with Unit 6.